Uh, well, my, my paper has a uh, um, methodological uh, nature uh, because uh, um, we have just finished um, a very large research uh, in Italy. It was uh, both a quantitative and a qualitative research. I will uh, uh, insist on the uh, qualitative approach uh, because uh, uh, in my view, uh, this is uh, a, a true uh, novelty in uh, uh, our field. Um, the quantitative research was uh, uh, made through uh, 3,238 questionnaires. Uh, the qualitative research uh, has uh, 164 cases. Uh, 25 years after the quantitative research on religiosity in Italy, the new survey carried out in uh, uh, 2017 on the same team presents a significant novelty. The approach was no longer only quantitative by administering a questionnaire to a statistically representative sample of the entire Italian population, but also concerned a group of 164 subjects suitably selected on the national territory, following criteria not far from the overall demographic picture, even if there is no claim, of course, to statistical representativeness and therefore to a generalization of the results. The subjects to be interviewed were selected through stratification of categories related to the degree of study, first of all, and the distinction of gender, residence, geographical distribution, and age. For almost half of the qualitative sample, i.e. 78 cases, the interviewers tried to obtain narratives, reflections, interpretation, and evaluation that were not at all solicited through direct or indirect questions on the theme of religiosity. On the other hand, for the rest of the 86 subjects interviewed, a two-fold method was used within the same interview. That is, a first part that could be freely used by interviewee in terms of content and a second part to be addressed based on some concepts proposed by the interviewer to solicit answers on daily and festive life, happiness and pain, life and death, God, prior, religious institutions, of course, the church in general, and Pope Francis. The mixed solution does not only concern the interview model, defined from time to time as uni, i.e. uniform in its total willingness to manage the interview by the interviewee, or mix in its twofold possibility. First of all, open speech, and then contents guided by some specific questions suggested by interviewer to focus the interview on social religious issues, to say uh, daily and festive life, happiness and pain, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what about the quantitative tools and qualitative analysis? In our research on religiosity in Italy, we try to corroborate the results of the qualitative analysis with sophisticated quantitative instruments in terms of mixed methods that offered significant inputs for the world study. T2K is a platform, is a software aimed at acquiring semantic lexical information from domain corpora. Through the combined use of statistical techniques and advanced tools of automatic language processing, T2K can analyze the content of documents, extract the most potentially significant terms and entities, names, places, people, and so on, identify the relationships that bind the terms and entities, index the starting body, and reconstruct a multidimensional map of domain knowledge contained in the document collection. The content analysis 
as an investigation is another tool we use. Providing a content analysis as an investigation applied to the text of the qualitative interviews. In practice, a survey form has been prepared that can be assimilated to a semi-structured questionnaire conceived with an ideal transcription in mind in which all the topics and aspects connected with the interview track were touched upon. First test on a small nucleus of transcribed text. The instrument in its tested and definitive version was subsequently applied to all interviews with classifying intent to capture recurring patterns, values, and social representation also according to variables used in the sampling. Another tool is the analysis of discursive dynamics. We analyze discursive dynamics detectable in qualitative interviews to discover and highlight significant flaws of the direct connection between the terms used, in particular between those identified as relevant concepts for the investigation, uh, the famous uh, uh, sensitizing concept uh, suggested by Herbert Blumer. This way, a first meta text was prepared to consist of a complex of 320 conceptual categories. And inside each category, many concepts, of course. Subsequently, a second meta text was prepared by recording the conceptual categories into 24 conceptual macro dimensions. Mm -hmm. On both versions of the corpus, the lexical correspondences analysis and the WASPEC, vocabulary specific procedure were implemented. Then using the customized case settings of the T-Lab software, the probabilistic concatenation analysis of semantic nodes the nodes are, of course, the sensitive concepts, was carried out on the version of the corpus codified in 24 dimensions, finding roles and semantic activities of the different nodes or sensitizing concepts. Based on all this information, micromaps have been drawn and centered, respectively, on the source, relay, and condenser nodes. Uh, this is a, a software invented by a Canadian anthropologist, characterized by the highest semantic activity to say work, family, and faith, according to the results of our research. Finally, a map was prepared, which graphically represents the overall discursive dynamics of the interviews. Finally, a content quantitative analysis. The text of the interviews were collected and organized in a custom dictionary, undergoing pretreatment, cleaning, and lemmatization, lexicalization, normalization, and segmentation operations. Consequently, the textual data thus organized were used as the basis for an integrated path analysis that goes from the evaluation of a peculiar language to occurrences analysis, lexical correspondences analysis, cluster analysis, and finally, a social network text analysis. To conclude, we are working on qualitative data applying the indication of a grounded theory of constructivist matrix based on the model proposed by Katie Charmas a pupil of uh, uh, Glasser and Strauss. The procedure for the construction of the theory started from first processing line by line coding or the most common coding summarized in provisional categories and their properties. The properties are the explanation, the descriptions of categories. This first processing was carried out by the team of researchers who used the famous NVivo 10 software, now it is uh, in Vivo 12. To this material have been added the memos uh, elaborated by the interviewers who have supported 
enriched and oriented the following level of analysis. Memos are a type of document that allows recording ideas, insights, interpretations, or progressive understanding of the material in the research project. They provide a way to keep the analysis separate from, but linked to, the material being analyzed. For the initial first level coding, inductive logic was mainly used to identify the labels or categories related to the selected portions of text. Focused coding or second level coding was then used. The procedure involved a continuous comparison of the process underway to a constant comparison between analysts. In this phase, the coding was characterized as a more abstract conceptually while remaining adherent to the data. It was a matter of delimiting the analysis of the data exclusively to those elements strongly connected to the central categories identified, having the function of guidance for the further phases. While focused coding represented the process of synthesis of the interpretative categories that emerged, Theoretical coding, the final coding, then identified the relationships between the categories. All this has been done by using abductive reasoning. I mean, the uh, Pierce abduction, characterized by an increasing level of conceptualization of data to elaborate systems of relations between the concepts identified. In this phase of elaboration of the core categories, five founding nuclei have emerged, able to generate the theory. First, pastoral care, to say believers who help other people by drawing inspiration from the values of Christianity. Second, rhetoric of charitable humanitarianism, people who perceive other people as different and dangerous and at the same time, tell of the effort to welcome and accept the needy. Third, prisoners of despair, they experience the difficulties of life in a passive and resigned way and takes refuge in God and prayer. Fourth, embracing faith, practicing believers guided by Christian precepts and living the faith as dogma. And finally, beyond everything, individuals, who are discordant on the themes of life, death, and the afterlife, but beyond ideas, actions, and skepticism, they have faith in God. Uh, this is the presentation of the ground theory approach, but let me uh, present the general perspective. Therefore, we have uh, five uh, methods. The automatic text analysis, the content analysis as investigation, analysis of discursive dynamics, content quantitative analysis, and finally, the grounded theory approach. Now, just to have uh, a complete idea of uh, the uh, building of uh, this uh, theory, this is the diagram of uncertain faith theory uh, made by statements, arguments, and conditions. But uh, what you can see here is just as an example. First of all, the primary general concepts are faith and uncertainty. The particular primary concepts are religion, church, religiosity, spirituality, values. The particular secondary concepts are God, prior and Pope Francis. And now, as examples, statements, arguments, and conditions. The statements, charge marginal religion, reduced religious practice, rising unbelief and diffused uncertainty. In the arguments, other immigrant religions, spirituality and leaving the church, moral critique of the church, consensus to Pope Francis for innovation. And finally, the conditions, applicability of this uh, theory is medium, extensibility limited, modification possible are marginal, 
specificity depends on the environment. That's all. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto, for that very extensive uh, discussion on the methods that you've used in coming up with. Give a lot of appetite. And, uh, and I see the, the outcome of your study is uh, go against uh, our understanding of uh, how we, we distinguish simply between individual and institutional uh, religiosity. Because for, uh, for instance, pop is in one side, but the church in other side. So there is institutional uh, religiosity important. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, the outcome of your study that uh, we can, uh, uh, that, that I can understand uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, really uh, a new uh, um, uh, way of understanding religiosity today in Italy. I stop here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Sari, for the question. Um, I have to explain a little bit uh, the kind of uh, research uh, we did. I have worked for years in order to prepare this project. Finally, we received the, fin the financement and it was possible for the first time in Italy to have a combined research. I mean, a qualitative and a quantitative. Uh, Franco Garelli did uh, the uh, quantitative research through the questionnaires and I did the qualitative, but we work it together. I mean, in the questionnaires are some questions that we have asked in the free interviews too. Uh, mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, there is a, a solution made in order to have a real, a real mixed method. Uh, actually, uh, in my perspective, uh, it is possible to uh, have uh, many spots on the uh, field and to collect the different data. And I have to say that it is impossible to have the same results from so different approaches. Now, what about the difference between institutional and personal religiosity or between the Pope Francis and the church as institution? Uh, this is a difference made just for uh, interpretation purposes, not because the uh, results were th this way. Actually, in the free interview, the interview uh, named Uni, uh, the Pope, the Church, uh, the Death, uh, the, 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 the Islam, everything is inside in a complex, very complex articulation. Uh, in the case of mixed uh, interviews, uh, of course, qualitative interviews, uh, it, it depends on the interviewer. Because sometimes the interviewer don't, uh, doesn't follow the, the line uh, we did. For instance, the, the first question in the uh, guided part was uh, to speak of a daily life. But in some cases, the interviewer preferred to ask about the Pope or about the church or about the death or about uh, uh, the prayer and so on and so on. Therefore, I have to say that we have just published a book. This is uh, the uh, 500 pages book, and we have seven more books on the same religiosity in Italy. Therefore, something unbelievable. And uh, you imagine to follow all these kind of things and to understand step by step and I have to say that it was a battle, it was a real battle in Italy in particular against the predominance of a quantitative approach. To understand the qualitative is a, a 
a real fight. Now, I and our colleagues, we are able to prove that the new way is possible in order to better understand what religiosity really is. Because uh, you can uh, find, uh, for instance, uh, um, many pages, about 30, 40, in which on the left side, you have the qualitative results, and on the right side, you have the quantitative res results. And you can verify, you can uh, uh, check if uh, there is some convergence or there is some divergence, and so on and so on. But I have to say that in general, the convergence is more frequent than divergence. This is thanks to these so different approaches, so complicated uh, project. Uh, and therefore, I think that uh, this is just a starting point. We will see in the following years if uh, there are other people, other scholars who will follow this kind of uh, uh, project. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Roberto. To you, sir. Thank you. And at this uh, point, perhaps we could bid our goodbyes already. CJ is waiting for us to leave the room. Thank you very much for the opportunity to have conversations with all of you from different parts of the world. Thank you, Sir Roberto, Sir Mom Alfred, Sir Afe, Sir Augusto, and those who were with us. Thank you, Tony, Ignacio, and the rest of, uh, the rest of those who are uh, here. Thank you, thank you, thank you very ciao, much. Ciao.